What's up, everybody? Max Brown here. Today we are breaking down Drake May's interception tape, which right away, that may be why you clicked on the video, but inherently this video is going to be negative. There's a Drake May highlights breakdown. has got to come next, but I'm diving into the interceptions because I want to see if the interceptions from last year are signs of bigger concerns that NFL GMs and fans like us should be wary of, or if it's, hey, a byproduct of his player teammates not making plays. His player's got to help him out or just what's in the interceptions which naturally are going to be his worst plays that's why I want to dive in there and I also want to dive in because I feel like over the past couple weeks Drake Mays become one of the more polarizing quarterbacks in this class you get some people that think he should be the first overall pick I mean, that, that, that group's small, but there's a lot of people that think he should be the number two pick. And then there's a growing portion of people that think, hey, he's not even a top 10 pick, or he should be a late first rounder, or, you know, with all the other quarterbacks in the draft, Drake May maybe isn't that two or three guy. So diving into the interceptions, especially because I'm a West Coast guy. I've seen a lot of Michael Penix. I've seen a lot of Bo Nix. I've seen a lot of Caleb Williams. Haven't seen a ton of Drake May. And so wanting to dive in here. And for the true OGs in my channel, I'll dive in in 10 seconds. So hang on with me. But the true OGs in my channel you remember the film breakdowns I used to do back six seven years ago I got away from that because the editing and the planning was just too much as you can tell I got this little telestration tool working with the iPad let me know in the comments what you think of this whole process but it should allow me to get videos out more efficiently in greater volume and hopefully just the viewership or I guess the production value is elevated as a result of me uh, me telestrating on the iPad but without further ado let's dive into it anytime that I break down a film I'm always wary of the scenario of the game right here North Carolina they're up two touchdowns against their rivals so it's you know an emotion filled game end of the third quarter you know key key point in the game to either put it away go up three scores or allow South Carolina to uh, to hang around second and nine this is a quarterback down if you're a quarterback this is the down that you need to uh, you need to win on for your team this first play I've cheated a little bit I've seen this uh, this clip before but sending the uh, receiver in motion he gets pressure from his right hand side flushes out to his right, and ultimately throws a, throws an interception. I'm going to hang to the back view because the back view shows my biggest concern with this clip, and that is Drake May's feet. Right there, he gets to the top of his drop, and right away, he has this defensive end that's he can feel that pressure coming from his right-hand side. His right tackle's battling, his right tackle's doing everything he can, but Drake May can feel that, hey, I'm vulnerable to this side. He also can feel, as we play pause at just one frame, that this defensive end is coming from the inside. And so for Drake May, it doesn't need to be a whole, let me show you my entire chest defense and let me get my base wide and the footwork gets sloppy here. This is just one dude. This this is just one rusher. It doesn't need to be a full, a full panic job. What I would like to see, and this is what Tom Brady did so well, step over, step up. It's a day one quarterback drill, but when you feel that pressure, it doesn't need to be, hey, all systems abort. It can easily be, let's just hang out step over, step up, and make a throw. Make that throw either to this tight end, to this tight end in the middle, or the guy in the middle that he ultimately tries to get it toward. Gets flushed out to his right because he's he's panicking. Because his feet were off place, he, he gets that rush. He feels the need to scramble. He's now in panic mode a little bit, and a pass rush that was not that intense ultimately forces this bad decision right here. So often with bad footwork, we talk about bad footwork equals a quarterback being inaccurate. But here is the perfect example of bad footwork equaling interception, a catastrophic mistake that allows a team to hang around in a rivalry game. So that to me is... That is one of those points that some of the chatter about Drake May's footwork concerns, that would be one right there. Going to the next play, right away, this is going to be single high, uh, man free, one safety in the middle of the field for Drake May. He knows he's got a vertical to this receiver on to his right. As long as he can manage the safety, and as long as this defender right here is uh, inside leverage, which will ultimately work, uh, work more inside, he is working that green vertical route in the slot all day long. Unless the picture changes, that gets him off of it right away. I like how quick Drake May makes this decision. Gets there, get the ball out of his hands quick. I love that. I don't fault him for that. If you're a receiver, quarterback's giving you a chance to make a play, go up and make it. And then, yeah, it's going to rush, 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 rush. But I want to show the back view. So look at this. Ball snap, 
one, two, ball out. I like the quick decision making. Splitting hairs here though, as this receiver high points this football, right here. The receiver should get it done. The receiver should come down with this ball. And this is where I think Caleb Williams and, uh, and Michael Penix are absolutely elite. If you're splitting hairs, this ball is more towards the inside if we see that red X, which forces the receiver to go up and in the inside to get that rebound. Versus if the ball was more here where the green X is, away from both defenders, maybe that's an easier rebound to get. I think Michael Penix is phenomenal at throwing the back shoulder fade balls. A lot of people are criticizing, oh, it's just he had Jalen Polk, oh, he had Roma Dunze. Of course he was great down the field. No, I think Michael Penix is phenomenal at putting the ball right here where the green X is, where only his dude can, di can get it. And those 50-50 balls, becomes 75-25 balls rather than right here where it ultimately comes an interception. Again, I don't fault Drake May necessarily on this. I'm not reading into this too much if I'm if I'm an NFL GM, but it's little things. If you go from Drake May's uh, tape to Michael Penix's tape, you might notice something like that. All right, next play. We got, you're up 14-0 Minnesota, beginning of the second quarter. You got an opportunity to go up three scores beginning of the second, put this game away. Don't make a catastrophic mistake. Put your foot on the gas. Drake's going to roll to his right, and he throws a level one ball, and it allows this linebacker to get involved. As we, as we replay that, there's just not enough arc on this throw, right? So pause it here. This defender is ultimately who picks it off. This receiver is who they're trying to get the ball to, and I want him to throw the ball right here where the green, uh, green circle is. And don't throw a level one ball here. I want you to throw a level two ball over there, and don't even allow this linebacker to get involved. I low-key have never seen a linebacker, usually a linebacker makes this play when they are dropping deep. This linebacker is not dropping deep. He's dropping flat down the line. He should never make this play. But as we roll it, you can see just a bad mistake of, of a poor, poor throw by Drake May. Again, this is just one play. But I do think it speaks to, you know, it goes both ways. Maybe on one side you can say, hey, he trusts his arm strength and he just lost track of a backer. Sure. Or it speaks to, hey, is there some awareness things that we need to talk about? That's how I would be thinking about it if I was a GM. Again, not going to read too much into, into one play, but that is a bad interception from a quarterback standpoint. Right here, plus side of the territory, 35-yard line, you know, approaching that red zone. As we play this, Drake's got to come back to his right hand side down here he's going to work this he's ultimately going to take his eyes back towards the middle of the field and but ultimately he gets pressure which doesn't allow him to really step into this throw gets sacked there and gets pressure as we get towards the back view pay attention to this right tackle he gets beat off the ball this is not on drake may for the pressure this is a good, this is actually a great point right here. A lot of the criticism that I think is somewhat uninformed out there is, oh, Drake May can't manage free rushers. I shouldn't say uninformed. This is not a free rusher. This is an offensive tackle getting beat. So this is not on a, this is not a protection recognition thing that Drake, Drake May is, is not seeing, right? This is just his tackle getting beat. But what I will say is right here, when he realizes, hey, my tackle's been beat, this is where Caleb Williams is elite. This is why Caleb Williams is going to be the number one quarterback in the draft. Because when things aren't perfect, Caleb Williams has that running back agility where he can get out of the pocket right here, get out of the pocket, make something happen, and you don't see this turnover. Drake May, he's a couple steps back athleticism-wise. He takes his eyes. See, right now his eyes looking towards the comeback. And then as we play pause, he now is circling back towards this area of the field. He sees the defensive end now flashing in his face. All right, what do you do here? What do you do here? As a quarterback, you can't make a bad play worse, but unfortunately that's what Drake does because now he's going to take his eyes back out to this side where the green arrow is, try to fit it in there, and he gets hit. It's a bad throw, just trying to do too much. Again, I'm not blaming this on Drake. This is not Drake May's fault, but when you size up the quarterback's one against each other, this is where a Caleb Williams and even a Jaden Daniels is elite. In fact, that's a perfect, this is the perfect play. If you're the commanders right now watching this play, this is where you might like Jaden Daniels' ability to one, be calm in the pocket, but then two, escape this if things go chaotic right here. Hopefully this doesn't happen in the NFL, just a straight up beat, but it could happen. This 
is Drake May, unfortunately, making a bad play worse. Again, not his fault, but it's the nature of the beast. Right here versus Clemson, likely a superior team. He's down two touchdowns. You're on the five-yard line going in. You cannot turn the ball over. If you score a touchdown here, it's a one-score game. It's a new ball game. If you st if you throw a, uh, an interception, unfortunately, this is going to be a pick six. This, this could put the ball game away. A little play fake looks to his right. He's flushing to his left. He's looking for one option here, two option here. Not there. Good coverage by Clemson. Now Drake May flushes to his right. Right here, he's got a few options. One, he can hit this tight end in the flat, paint it right on his chest. Two, he can run this rock right down here. Or three, let's just throw it away and move on to the next play. What you can't do is what happens here where he throws it right to the defensive back and this is, oh baby, this is... Uh, this is pick six territory, un, uh, unfortunately, here. I'm going to fast forward this just to keep moving along. Watch this play again, right? You like the mobility. You like his feel for – you like his ability as a pocket passer to use his athleticism. But again, right here, you got one of three options. Run it or paint it low on your tight end's chest. The concern with me on this throw is, one, I don't even know where he's throwing this ball low-key. Like, this is not a good look. But then, two, if you are going to throw this ball – Paint it on your tight end's chest. Like, where is that throw going? I don't know. Tight end's not really helping him out right here because, I don't know, I think he thinks he's going to try to block for him. This is obviously a crapshoot of a play. But again, this is not good in a critical time in the game. Again, this is another late third quarter play. Don't like it. If I was a GM, I'd ask Drake, like, what were you trying to do there? Try to unpack, you know, is it just, hey, I thought the... Tight end, we had worked that play. I thought the tight end was going to cut in. Oh, it was just a miscommunication because the tight end was uh, blocking for me and I thought he was still running a route. Those things happen. It's football, especially when you're on a lesser team like North Carolina playing against more talent like Clemson. You can have a tendency to press, but obviously a bad mistake by Drake May. And I open up the video saying, hey, some interceptions are, hey, receiver, you got to go make a play for me. Some, some interceptions are, quarterback, you got to be better. Those past couple are quarterback, you got to be better. And then here, again, compromised protection up front for North Carolina. A little bit. I guess, you know, Clemson's bringing five dudes. There's some pressure there. But Drake May is not going to be able to step into his throw. He's trying to hit a vertical on the, uh, the top end of the screen. And two things kind of stick out. One is the footwork. Because he gets pressure down by his feet, he has to throw off his back foot. When you throw off your back foot, that leaves the ball short. And he throws this ball by the front pylon. I want this ball by the back pylon. You go back pylon right here. Go check out this corner. This corner is in his hip pocket. There's no back shoulder. There's no go get a rebound component. It's meet me at the back pylon. I'm throwing this ball in the 40-yard line. It's plenty of arm strength. Meet me at the back pylon. This is a home run shot. Let's go get six points and move on. Instead, pressure by his feet, not able to step in. That's why I think this ball is about seven, eight yards short. Meets him at the front pylon and unfortunately meets the cornerback instead of his receiver at the front pylon. And it's a pick for Clemson. Let's check this back view as he gets going. Again, pressure to his left. It's going to happen in the National Football League. Watch his left leg. His left leg's not able to fully step into the throw, right? Not able to fully step into the throw, right? He has to hop right there. Totally off his back foot. Totally off his back foot. And uh, it ultimately ends up being short interception. They're down 30 points at that game. Not reading too much into that interception. But again, that's a throw where, you know, if you're elite, 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 you can find a way to make, make it happen. I'm sure Drake May's highlights have tons of plays where he's making it happen. This unfortunately was not one of them. But as I step back from those, what, five or six interceptions we just watched, the most concerning one is the first one that we started with, where that's just a single rusher heating things up on him and his feet break down. And because his feet break down, the whole play is sped up on him. His brain's telling him, hey, I got to enter chaos mode. He flushes out to his right and makes a poor decision at a critical point in the game. That first pick is the one that really stands out. And if you're an NFL GM, you need to evaluate is that something, the footwork, is that something I can coach out of him? Or is that something that's a sign of, hey, it's part of who he is, it's ingrained in who he is, and that's a deficiency in his game that we really need to monitor whether that deficiency is more of a concern than what Jaden Daniels' concern is, you know, where his, where his receivers giving him the ability to have so many explosive plays at LSU or whatever factors you unpack as an NFL GM. But hey, fun to break this down. 
to bring this full circle, I will do a Drake May highlights uh, breakdown, just so you guys don't think uh, I'm a hater uh, on that front. But uh, let me know what else you want to see from me. Uh, if you like this breakdown, consider hitting the uh, like and subscribe button down below. Um, but fun diving into this draft content. More to come on that front. And uh, appreciate you guys hanging. See you next time.